Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item number five, consent agenda items. Approval of the minutes, approval of travel requests, approval of personal action notices, approval of cellular authorizations, approval of human services report. Do I have a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additions or corrections here? Your none, call the roll, please. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Dunson? Aye. Motion carries. Routine business, approval of claims. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additions here, Stacy? No. Any none, call the roll, please. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, department head reports. Uh, Sean, I believe you have something you uh, need to share with us. Yes, it's actually on Stacy's report later on, but uh, I wasn't here yesterday, so I'm trying to catch up. So I got other stuff I need to work on. So hopefully Eric's coming up to relieve me. Um, we have a proposal from Eagle View. They're the people who do our flyovers of the county every three years. Um, what they proposed to us was um, basically a, a, an extension of our existing contract with better imagery uh, throughout the county at a what I think is a fairly minimal price increase. Um, the increase in price is $1,743 uh, per flight that we usually pay it annually, so it's a $581 increase um, per year that we pay. If that gets divided amongst all four entities, it's under $150 per entity. Um, if it does get divided that way, we need to get those agreements in place with those other entities for our 2022. And then this would also add an additional flyover in 2025. Uh, right now, this is just the proposal, so there's nothing to approve. We're looking for a consensus. And from there, we will get the official agreement in front of you uh, for signatures. Um, we do have some examples of the increase of the resolution of the imagery. Um, on the left-hand side, we have the what they call the six-inch imagery, and then on the right-hand side, it's the nine-inch, which is what we're currently paying for. Um, you can see there's a lot more clarity to the images um, <clears throat> and uh, provides a greater level of detail. Um, we do recommend going this route, especially given the, the fairly low price impact and low budgetary impact. Um, but it is definitely much, much better imagery. This isn't actually Brookings County. These are um, examples that um, our sales rep pulled from other communities where they've done similar upgrades from the nine inch to the six inch imagery. Okay. Board. Thoughts? Commissioner Pierce? I'm in favor of this, but I can't remember two things. So you said four entities. It's us, the city utilities, and who else? Um, it's the city, <clears throat> excuse me, city, county, I believe it's BMU, and E911. E okay, yes. Thank you. And do they normally fly once a year or? Once every three years. Once every three years. We had our last flyover in 2019. I believe some portions of that did get extended into early 2020 due to a sudden uh, everything kind of springing at once when spring hit. Um, we had a, a substantial amount of leaf cover in some of our images that they, uh, per contract, were required to refly. Um, so we were able to see, well, and we are able to keep those original images too. 
It's just that they aren't as useful because there's more leaf cover. So 22 is when we would have Yes, our... yes, this would be a, a 2022 flyover and then it does include an extension to a 2025 flyover at the same price in terms of what this proposal is. And it was something that was approved in 2018. In 2018, you guys approved the, the current contract. And if we were to do nothing, it would continue. Um, and we would have the 2022 flyover with the existing, existing agreement in place with the nine inch imagery and um, that slightly cheaper price point. I would agree that I would support this. I think the, the six inch amateur is much more defined. I, I like sharper images. Um, and like I said, this is just their proposal, so we will get something to you for um, formal approval in the form of a or resolution, I believe, or agreement, yeah, okay. um, as soon as we get that paperwork from, from them. Okay. I see okay. nodding, so I will get that started. Okay. Thank you very much. Move forward. Mm -hmm. Brian, would you like to come up? Mr. Chair, could I ask Stacy a question on what we were just talking about? You know, the E911, go ahead. The E911 board, did they get money from anywhere other than the city and the county? So the surcharge money that comes in okay. off your telephone taxes, that revenue all goes to E911 as well. So, so it's more than just funded by the two separate entities. There are some other funds that, like tax type funds that come in and go directly to E911. So when they're paying a fourth of that cost, it's not us in the city that's paying it, it's coming out of some other resources? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Morning. Morning. Uh, March 22nd through the 25th, I attended the South Dakota Highway Superintendent's annual short course. Um, we were very well represented out there. We had uh, 50 of the 66 highway superintendents there and nearly uh, 260 uh, vendors and highway superintendents. So we, it was a very well attended conference. Um, I was I was very happy with this first meeting we've been able to have as a quorum in, in nearly two two and a half years. So it was uh, nice to meet with everybody again to get the networking out. And there's a lot of new highway superintendents out there. So it was a very well attended conference. I'm glad I went. Um, I'm sure some of you maybe seen uh, the South Dakota uh, DOT has been out with their boring crew and. Some of the roads they've been frequenting, frequenting more than off or more often than others. Uh, these are these uh, preliminary engineering grants we got for uh, seven structures around the county. So if folks have been seeing that, that's what's going on there. Um, little update: uh, you guys approved some uh, uh, right-of-way agreements uh, with some landowners uh, south of Volga. I know there's been some questions on whether or not uh, those structures are going to take place this year. Um, at this time, the one south of Volga on County Road 5 is going to be waiting until we know exactly what's happen happening with the Sinai Bridge. Uh, we're talking still a May letting for that, and if we can find a contractor that wants to move, move in right away. Uh, we're going to let that bridge take priority over this small structure. I know that I've gotten some questions uh, from some landowners uh, neighboring that, that structure. Uh, the structure north of Volga today, you'll be considering the agreements for right-of-way donations from Halens and Knutson. Um, on the 29th, I met with uh, Volga city officials and Chairperson Jensen and, and Stacy to review the the RFPs for Smar Avenue, uh, we got four of them. On 331, uh, the Bruce Bridge, when I went out to visit <laughs> that, they're moving along. Um, there's a schedule in my report here. It looks like we're going to be looking at a completion date still if they can stay on schedule of uh, mid to late June. 
So that's moving along quite well. Right of way agreements. I know you guys approved a pile of them at the last meeting on the 16th. Um, and according to Valley Telecommunications, that was the Arlington segment of their project. And today we'll be looking at the Volga segment of our project. Uh, I'm sure Stacy mentioned at the last meeting in my absence that I've been working on this with Valley since uh, November. Uh, March 30, I held a bid opening at 11 a.m. Uh, for our concrete rehabilitation project on County Road 23. And that will be discussed here later in the meeting. Uh, yesterday, we switched to our uh, summer schedule, uh, 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Uh, and along with that, we pulled down our load limits yesterday. Our roads are holding up exceptionally well. And I know I've seen quite a few uh, pieces of equipment moving in the field yesterday, so it's good to see that the farmers can get back in the field. I know we got some, they're talking a chance of rain here, but uh, it's nice to see that again. Um, coming up here on Wednesday, we're looking at uh, City of Elkton. I know uh, we had a SPN came in and, and gave a presentation last year in regards to this project. They're going to be looking at closing down that stretch of road on County Road 33 on the west side of the city of Elkton. Uh, their pre-con meeting to start off this year's work is going to be held on Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the Elkton Community Center. So if anybody's interested in going to that, I, I will be there. Um, on 316, I made mention of the, the local federal bridge replacement grant program. A um, little less funding compared to what the, the federal uh, government offered last year. Um, it sounded like the state was going to push in a little more funding in, in the tune of about $3 million, so we're getting close to what they offered last year. But uh, last year we applied for three and got one grant. And this year... With the uh, grants that are that we'd be looking at here, we're going to be, you know, applying for seven uh, total eligibility. If we would get all seven, that's fairly, really unlikely. But uh, we don't know. You don't get the grant if you don't apply. So we'd be looking at the tune of about 1.1 and trade for about 5.1. <coughs> and I have a map depicting that that will. Uh, if Stacy, you want to show that, that's the uh, schedule showing the the uh, Bruce Bridge. But the did did we get that map, or is that attached uh, later on? And one thing I wanted to point out to you, to the commission, uh, there are quite a few of these that are on on our county highway system, but. Um, the majority of these are on township. I wanted to make sure that the commissioners were aware of that. Um, like I mentioned, uh, I think there's there's two, three on our county highway system, and uh, and the other four are on the township system. Are there any questions about any of them? I know if you guys have questions later on when we consider them, but. Uh, I did want to point out this map. Stace, can you go back to the other sheet uh, for this? Where you had the ranking. Is that ranked by a... Uh... The, the reason that the this program is in existence is um, it's for structures in poor condition. Last year, if you remember, I brought you a, a list of all the structures in poor condition. And what we did is we broke it down... Uh, to the structures that were in the worst condition or what we considered the worst condition to be the most eligible to apply for. Uh, so the rank on that on the side there is what we feel. Uh, you know, if, if you look at the score, it's it's considered a modified big score. So, mm -hmm. you know, we only have, we, we kind of based our cutoff line on that 34 because last year was about at 38 was that that score cutoff line. So, can you tell us which ones are on the county system? Yeah, 
we go back to the map there. B structure on 44, County Road 44 north of White. And so how do I identify that on the chart that we were just looking There's at? There's a, well, number. you'd have to look at the structure number. The, o, the, the 06 is our county designation, and then the, the numbers uh, following would be the structure number. So I, I know it's maybe a little bit confusing because we didn't put them in numerical order there, but uh, uh, I guess we just based it off of uh, the actual structure number when we went down the list. Top two ranking ones are on our county 44 there. Yeah, yeah. Are any of, any of these in our five-year plan? Not currently, okay. but... I can't put it into the five-year plan because they, they didn't make us aware of this funding until February because we didn't know if the funding was even going to be available. And like I mentioned last year, this has zero effect on any of the, the, the grant cap that we, would, that we would have with the big program. You know, we're... we're Pretty near maxed out on our, our grant cap with a big program at four point three million. How, how is that administered? Do we they pay every do you do everything? Do we pay everything and then we re get reimbursed or do we have to run through them for bid lighting? At this point in time, you know, we're still gonna be we're still working on last year's structures and that they have a completion date of twenty twenty three. And at this point in time, it's still in the preliminary design phase, and what they've done is they've they've essentially clumped structures together from surrounding counties or areas into one engineer. So when it goes to let, some of the projects may be administered by the DOT, some of them may be administered by the uh, local entities. And that being said, uh, the structures south of town, the, they were administered by the DOT, so they pay all the bills and then we reimburse them. Where the structure north of Bruce, we pay all the bills and then the state reimburses us. And that's, that's handled locally. So it depends on which structures are administered by the DOT and which structures are lo handled locally. What, what would be, if we were to get these, would these be local or you don't know? It could be a mixed batch of both. Because that, that's the difference in the funding mechanism. If you guys recall, the, the south of town, we reimburse the DOT. North of Bruce, we, we get reimbursed by the DOT. Are they telling um, in the grant application materials when they expect the decision to be made on who gets the grants? That'll be, you know, the deadline for this is April 9th. And then, you know, like I mentioned, we didn't get notice of this until late February. Uh, last year, I believe we knew with our structure that we got, we knew in June. So I, I would expect somewhere <coughs> on that late May, June timeline. That way, the reason they do that is so we can get it planned for in the budget. That's what I was wondering if we yep. know by budget time. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Lori? Good morning. Um, let's see, in March I attended the new officials workshop. That was a lot of fun. Um, it was great to meet the other new officials and there are eight a lot throughout the state. I was surprised. So um, that was really good. Spring workshop will be coming up in May, and I'm looking forward to that. You always pick up little tidbits that you didn't think about or that can help your office out. Um, budget worksheets, those will be going out to department heads. So that's fun. We'll start that process up. Um, otherwise, we've been busy assisting with the city election and with the bid openings. Um, yeah, tax, tax cycle starts this month. Taxes are due, so I'll be putting something in the paper to remind citizens of that. And that's uh, otherwise just regular work going on. 
Any questions? Commissioner Spears? Where are we at and when will we see it in our paperwork that we get to switch over to the cash um, counting system? Okay, yeah. Um, state audit has been busy finishing up some of their requirements um, in other areas. He said he will be back this week and we will be able to finalize everything. So crossing our fingers for this week. Thank yep, you. and then you'll get your annual report at the next meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Bob, do you have a short one? Good morning. It's extremely dry out there. We, uh, we've had red flag warnings issued last week. So far in the last week, we've reported two grassland fires to Office of Emergency Management. On um, April the 3rd, we lost a half an acre and a skid, skid steer to a fire. And then last night, they had a fire man-made. Somebody was out hot rodding in a farmer's field and caught field on fire. So we reported those two. I passed out a list of the upcoming pods. It's important if a citizen wants to get a vacu vaccination through the, through the points of dispensing schedule, our next two coming up is April the 15th, and as, as of yesterday, we still had a few slots left on that one, and then April 22nd. After that, it'll probably go back over to, you have to call, find the clinic, and, and find where it's at. There, those are our two main ones coming up, April 15th and then April 22nd. We are at phase two now. I heard this morning that the governor got her vaccination because she falls within phase two, so... We encourage anyone to sign up. The way that you sign up for that is you call, you go on the internet, www.brookingshealth.org. And if you need transportation there, beta at 692-222242 will give you a ride, free ride to get your vaccination if you're so inclined. And just a couple things. March 29th, there was a first planning district had a, Zoom meeting on medical marijuana zoning regulations. That's going to be a, a topic that's going to be required by state law coming up. And uh, I know the state's attorney was also on that call as far as I, from what I could tell. And uh, so that's going to be an interesting topic that's going to come up and have to be addressed in our zoning ordinance, I believe. We received planning, the planning commission received training from Luke Mueller from first planning district on March 31st. And this afternoon at one o'clock, I am meeting with Banner's associate and uh, county commissioner and Jay Gilbertson from East Dakota to talk about the Madari Township Dyke Diversion Study. And if you're interested, Severe Weather Awareness Week's coming up the week of the 20th through 24th of April. And there's some online spotter talks, uh, April 8th, 15th, and 20th. You have to sign up on the internet to go to. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. It is 8.55. We do have a uh, scheduled agenda item, item A. Uh, public hearing and action to approve a retail on off sale wine and cider license for Good Roots Farm and Garden. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Mr. Chair. I'm going to recuse myself on this matter. Second. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, I'd like to open a public hearing. Uh, proponents, do you have any proponents that would like to speak to this issue? I'm just Bill Ross with the owner of the Goodrich Farm. And uh, just here to answer any questions that you have as we've applied for this. Don't any questions? Any questions? I guess there's no questions for as of now. Uh, thank you for appearing. Yeah. On behalf of uh, anything else you'd like to say? No, not up. There's no questions. Okay. Um, I'd invite anybody that's opponent that would like to speak. Anybody that's opponent would like to speak? 
I just I do have a question. Um, Jenna, what, uh, can you explain this license? Yep, so currently Good Roots Farm and Gardens has a uh, malt beverage license. Um, so, which is a fermented from grain. Um, and so they're, they're able to uh, sell on and off sale of that. And then they also have the South Dakota farm wine license, which allows them to uh, sell wine made from South Dakota. The license that they're currently um, seeking is the wine and cider license, which would allow them uh, to branch out and get wine made from all areas, not just South Dakota. Um, so basically the difference between the malt beverage and then like your cider would just be how it's fermented, you know, is the difference. Cider is fermented from fruit. So, um, so there's harder, hard ciders. So that would be the difference. I do believe that this is the only business in the county that has this type of license. So this would just give them the opportunity to branch out. Okay, thank you. Hearing no other comments, I'd like to close the public hearing. Uh, any comments by the commission? Hearing none, call the roll call, please. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Mike, would you have a short report? We have a couple minutes before next uh, scheduled agenda item. Sounds good. Um, good morning. Uh, first thing I guess is uh, the the welfare directors are looking at uh, setting up a database and mostly be tracking people that come in for housing or uh, utility assistance across a uh, number of counties. That's dependent upon how many counties actually sign up for this. Uh, the total cost is about twenty five thousand, which if there's ten counties that sign up for it, would make it about two thousand five hundred to get it set up. I don't know if there's going to be a maintenance fee or not. We're in the early stages of talking about it. Uh, my, I guess my recommendation was that we sign up. I don't know if it'll do us a whole lot of good because we do have that 90-day rule, and so it's not necessarily people coming from, let's say, Minnehaha County into Brookings. As long as they're here 90 days, it kind of sets up a little difference. But it, we're in the preliminary talks about it. So uh, the other thing I'm going to say is... Uh, on the 15th, there will be a housing board meeting. It'll be held here in room 300 at 12 o'clock. Let everybody know that's out there. And uh, I guess if you guys get a complaint about me, uh, I will say that it is true. I had a citizen come into my office, and whenever citizens come to my office, I always put a mask on. And this guy was demanding that I remove my mask. I told him, no, it was my office. It's my right to wear a mask. He said, you're on the county side, you need to take the masks off. And to me, that, that isn't right. So if they want to bring something forward to you, that's my side of the story. Okay. That's it. Any hey, question? Mike, on the group that's putting the database together, what group is doing that? Uh, right <clears throat> now it's, it's uh, Davidson County, uh, Brown County, Minnehaha. I don't remember if... if um, Coddington is in it necessarily. Uh, those are the ones that come off the top of my head. A lot of the smaller counties, especially the, you know, the, the like Sully, I'm not sure about Hughes, but a lot of those counties, uh, Hawken said that they wouldn't be interested in it because they don't really do that level of service. I just want to plant a little seed, and I know that you're not discussing this at this point, but if that gets off the ground and it goes and it goes well, this would be the place to have a lien registry for county liens. Just want to plant a little seed to I, think about it as you're going down that road. I'm not completely surprised that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. coughs> Other questions? Thanks, Mike. Uh, it is 9 o'clock. Uh, item B is a second reading public hearing and action approval ordinance number 21-01. 
Uh, Stacy has volunteered to read this for me. <laughs> I did. So I'm going to let her. <laughs> it's quite lengthy. Okay, ordinance number 21-01, an ordinance amending ordinance number 91-3, an ordinance establishing a county Housing and Redevelopment Commission for the Administration of HUD Section 8 Existing Certificate Voucher, Moderate Rehabilitation and Other Related Housing Programs, be it ordained by the County Commission of Brookings County, South Dakota, as follows to wit, Article 1, Brookings County Housing and Redevelopment Commission. Section 1, created. There is hereby created and established in and for the County of Brookings, a County Housing and Redevelopment Commission to administer, contract, control, and supervise HUD Section 8 existing certificate voucher, moderate rehabilitation, and other related housing programs through the use of municipal, county, and federal funds, and to exercise any and all powers conferred by SDCL Chapters 11-7 and 11-7A. Section 2, composition and appointment. The Housing and Redevelopment Commission shall be com Composed of five commissioners, the members shall be made up of at least one resident of the city of Brookings, at least one resident that resides outside the city of Brookings, and one county commissioner. The members shall be appointed by the chairperson of the board of county commissioners with approval of the county commission. Section three terms, the members shall be appointed to five-year terms beginning January 1st of each year. Each vacancy in an unexpired term should be filled in the same manner in which the original appointments were made. Section 4, ex officio members. The Brookings County Human Services Director shall be assigned as an ex officio member of the Housing and Redevelopment Commission. Section 5, meetings. The Housing and Redevelopment Commission shall hold meetings as necessary to complete such business as from time to time may come before it. Official meetings shall be in accordance with SDCL 125 uh, 1. Special meetings may be called at any time by the chairperson by giving at least 24 hours advance notice in accordance with SDCL 125 1.1. Section 6, Quorum of Commission Officers Rules. The powers of the Housing and Redevelopment Commission shall be vested in the commissioners thereof in office at any time, a majority of whom shall constitute a quorum for all purposes. Each, each commission shall select a chairperson, a secretary, and a treasurer from among its commissioners who shall hold their offices respectively for one year and until their successors have been appointed. The Commission shall adopt such bylaws and other rules for the conduct of its affairs as it deems appropriate. Section 7, Expenses of Commissioners. No Commissioner shall receive compensation for their services, but each Commissioner shall be entitled to receive necessary expenses, including travel expenses incurred in the performance of their duties based upon current state rates. Section 8, Commission as Body Corporate General Powers. The Housing and Redevelopment Commission shall be a public, corporate, and po politic, exercising public and essential governmental functions and, and shall have all the powers necessary or convenient to carry out the purposes set forth herein, together with the powers granted by SDCL Chapter 11-7 and 11-7A, inclusive. But the Commission shall not have the power to levy or collect taxes or special assessments. The Housing and Redevelopment Commission shall have the power and authority to superintend, manage, administer, and control federal housing programs within its jurisdiction, including the power to contract with individuals, public or private firms, to administer said housing program and on behalf of the Commission. Section 9, Collection of Funds. All funds and revenues derived from the operation of the Housing and Redevelopment Commission may be collected by the Brookings County Finance Office or, other, or such other officer as shall be appointed by such Commission. Section 10, reporting, in accordance with SDCL 117106, the Commission shall keep an accurate account of all its activities and of all its receipts and expenditures and shall annually in the month of January make a report thereof to the Auditor General and to the Brookings County Board of County Commissioners. Article 2, this ordinance is intended to amend ordinance number 91-3 to the extent such ordinance is inconsistent with this ordinance, it is hereby repealed. All other ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. This ordinance is based upon resolution number 91-10 adopted by the Brookings County Board of County Commissioners on March 19, 1991 and resolution 91-11 adopted by the Brookings County Board of County Commissioners on April 2, 1991. The housing needs addressed in those resolutions continue today and those resolutions remain in effect. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, I now would like to open a public hearing. Uh, would there be any proponents that would like to speak to this item? 
Uh, is there any proponents that would like to speak to this item? Hearing none, I'd like to offer if any opponents would like to speak. Is there any opponents that would like to speak? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public hearing. Any other comments? Hearing none, call the roll call, please. Orsma? Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, it's uh, 9.07. Uh, let's As part of that, though, uh, Mr. Chair, there is okay. an action Sorry, to appoint a that. commissioner, yeah. Item I, action to appoint commissioner to the Housing and Redevelopment Commission upon approval of the ordinance. Do I have a motion uh, to approve? So I currently, a motion to appoint. Commissioner Jensen is on that um, because it's always been, we've gotten into the habit of appointing the chair to this board this new ordinance when it goes into effect states that it does not have to be the chair so this action would be to appoint someone to that um to this board and then with the thought that they would maybe more permanently stay in that position and carry that position from year to year and keep that institutional knowledge moving forward i believe that commissioner krogman had previously said that he would be interested in he did say that did? Yes, you did. <laughs> so you, oh, I, do you want a nomination or no? <laughs> All right. The one, the one question I had. Uh, Sitting right here. You, you did. Does the commissioner that. have to reside within the three minutes? So right now we do have, and Mike can help correct me if I'm wrong, we do have someone who resides in the city of Brookings other than the commission appointee, correct? And we do have someone that is outside as well. So we have those we have that covered within their current membership without having a specific commissioner fill one of those roles. So is the appointment made by the chair then? And we approve? Yes, I mean, th this would typically take place on with all of your appointments at the beginning of the year in January, so it's a little off, off cycle, but um, I think you could just make the motion and approve some appoint somebody now and then this would become part of that official listing January 1 And this commissioner would be in place for how many years five Not necessarily no this would just be the commission appointee So it would be appointed that person would be appointed as part of those annual appointments each year but for now um, what this would be is this person would um, be there through the end of this year in that position. I would move that we appoint Commissioner Krogman to serve on the board for the year 2021. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Mr. Krogman, congratulations. <laughs> and, Speech. and then I have a question. Mike said that the meeting next meeting is April 15th. And will this new ordinance be uh, on their agenda so that it's considered and talked about and, and maybe that January reporting thing discussed? I don't set that agenda, so right. would that, is, I'm just asking the two members of the board. <laughs> Mike, who the would you come forward? Yeah, the next one is on the fifteenth meeting. Uh who sets the agenda and uh next meeting set on uh the fifteenth is actually set by the housing uh here in, in Brookings, um housing office. We can put on there that we will update the list of who's currently on uh, the board. Uh, <clears throat> it probably won't have a whole lot of impact, you know, basically because mm -hmm. it's, you know, a citizen board and it would just be when someone resigns, a new person comes on. In this particular case, it happens to also be, a, you know, a commissioner, but I don't view that as being something that's going to make much difference uh, to that organization. Okay. But Bram needs to see the new ordinance 
what we just passed. The the ordinance I'll forward on to them. Uh, Ram will get a copy of the ordinance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, we have about four minutes. Dustin, would you like to give a report? <clears throat> Morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, attendance for the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center from March 16th. Uh, the gun range, we had 163, 163 people come in. Uh, archery range, we had 147. Last week was extremely busy, and we were open on Saturday of Easter. I think a lot of people uh, had family in town, so they came out and tried out the ranges. The events we held, 4-H shooting sports continues. They have two weeks left before they go to their state match. Uh, Brookings Pistol and Rifle Club, they're still meeting on Tuesday nights, but they're kind of winding down. They have to shoot so many targets uh, to send a peer, but I think they've shot a few extra, so they, I think they only have a couple more times left to come in. March 17th, we had a blood drive in the archery range. Um, just to kind of clear up any confusion, we actually set up tables in our archery range, and people come into the facility to give blood. Uh, a few people thought they just parked a bus outside, but no, they actually come into the facility. They use our bathrooms, um, set tables up in the archery range. It goes pretty good. They got it down pretty, pretty packed. We had three private events in our classrooms. Uh, Rochester Armored Car used the gun range on March 19th. Midwest Maidens practiced on March 19th as well in the archery range. Brookings County Republicans met um, on the 20th, their monthly meeting every third Saturday. We had one of our in-house basic pistol classes on the 21st and 22nd of March. The Arrowmates, they're done for the year. The last night was the 29th um, of March. They absolutely love the facility. They're coming back next year, they said. We actually have a guy from Watertown and a guy from Sioux Falls that drive down every Monday night to participate. And they fly little model airplanes in the archery range. They averaged about 10 people. They even, uh, they even got a few college kids to come out this year and participate. Uh, this Saturday will be the last night of our Vegas shoot. The Wildlife Federation, they had their monthly meeting April 2nd. Just to give an update on the HVAC of the facility, Train installed the GFP heater, and it, it seems to be working pretty good, so hopefully that fixed that problem on the north side of the building there for their offices. Uh, I talked to Alex, who's kind of our rep. Uh, he said the new unit is still, they're waiting on that, and the dynamic filters. Those got a couple weeks left, he said, um, before they get those, and hopefully everything's installed by the end of May. Just to give an update on our grant that we applied um, for through Game Fish and Parks, we did not receive that. <coughs> um, but I've been working with Sonia on 4-H, and we're, they applied for a grant that we might help out with to get some new targets for the archery range, um, just to kind of replace some of the older ones. That's all I had for my report. Do you guys have any questions at all? No questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to regular regular agenda items. Uh, item C is 915, uh, an ad hoc drainage committee presentation. Uh, would you guys like to come forward, uh, introduce yourself? And... Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I didn't get a chance to visit with you ahead of time. How much time have you guys set aside? Oh, hey, man. I don't know how long. Okay. 15 minutes? Okay. I didn't know. Uh, the, I guess the intent would be that you've all received the report, and I assume you've all read it. Uh, most of you have been through these discussions before, so it wasn't a lot of eye-opening information. But uh, when uh, my name is Spence Hawley. Uh, I was late for the first meeting, so I was elected chairman. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of like Ryan. I feel I feel your pain. But, uh, uh, the intent is that, that we'll just kind of walk through the report and hit highlights area. If you have question or if we have fellow committee members that want to add some input, uh, we'll just kind of informal from that. If you're acceptable to that, yep. on it. Um, the. What Bob Hill drafted this for us with the help of Ben, and the intent of the, the report was to be a resource for you going forward. Uh, the last real discussion that the county had had on this was back in 2015. Before that was your big 1985 study. And uh, it's, uh, we felt that it was important that we document everything that we did and discussed 
so it's a basis going forward so people don't have to reinvent the will every time you start this process, which someday you're going to, again, when it starts raining a bunch and we have a lot of water, you're going to have the same discussions again. Uh, the committee members, uh, you're all familiar because you appointed them, but for everybody else, uh, myself was on it, uh, Jay Gilberson from the East Dakota Water Development District, you had appointed to it, Lyle Bowles, retired businessman, uh, Leanne Pierce was our, our county commissioner rep, uh, we had Jim Sampson from your uh, GIS department in the county, and uh, Ben Kleinjohn, deputy state's attorney, and then uh, Bob Hill from the, the county drainage. Uh, we met nine times. We started in February last year, and about that time, our second meeting, the COVID hit. And so we kind of backed off then into August, and we decided to start meeting again, and uh, we met the nine different times. Uh, the next page on was uh, the entities that who we visited with. As you can see, we went, we tried to, uh, <coughs> we tried to spread out our discussions and get as much information as we could from experts from the NRCS, the Department of DOT, City Engineers Office, Brookings Utilities, got land south of town we're involved with, uh, Banners, CDI Engineering, they've been involved with drainage for years. Uh, Brian, your county highway superintendent, obviously. Uh, several townships, five different townships. We had representatives visited, and then some private citizens came and gave some testimony and information on their issues that they had, too. Uh, the, I've, I did want to mention one thing, that we did develop a mission statement at the very beginning, and we tried to redefine exactly what you had asked us to do, and so we came up with that short sentence there, uh, that we were to study the drainage system to include natural and man-made features in Brookings County and make recommendations to the Brookings County Drainage Board as to how the drainage system might be proved, improved. And the Brookings County Drainage Board, as you know, is yourselves, so. Um, The first area we started, and uh, Bob was really good about giving us the background on, on Brookings County and what they've been involved with in the drainage. Uh, probably the highlight, just to make a quick comment, and again, if I miss something that you guys think important, you step in, please, and tell me if you would. Uh, in 1985, you had a, a, a real large uh, study done on drainage in Banners had completed that for you and uh, you went through it um, and ultimately you didn't proceed with their recommendation to uh, for the drainage first off for cost second it was mentioned in here was dry conditions and the third was just uh, the uh, ordinance issues that was going on at that same time 85 the legislature developed some new drainage ordinances so then in 86, the commission turned around and adopted a drainage ordinance based off of what the state's requirement was at that time. Uh, then uh, between 86 and 2010, the, you had different federal court actions, the Clean Water Act, and in 2011, as you know, you repealed your drainage ordinance here in, in the county. Uh, primarily for a uh, liability issue is, is the reason you did that. And then in 19, and in 2015, you revisited the 85 banner study again, um, and you kind of came up with this, what we did again, is that you kind of left it to individual landowners to clean out their ditches and all that. Um, with the further recommendation that you come back and study drainage periodically. And you'll see both of those are in our recommendations again that uh, uh, to do that. The, the next parts are, are we kind of looked at specific areas. Uh, number one was uh, item B was culvert management. Is uh, that came in our initial discussions and maybe our problems was on culverts and uh, sizing and uh, and uh, the drainage that gets backed up behind it so we we talked to your county superintendent on uh, on that um, 
the discussion came about inventory and sizing and how it's sized. We brought in the DOT and uh, they talked about, and it's, it's, the details are referenced in here, that the 100-year flood level plus uh, 100, 10 feet? One foot. One foot. I got the wrong number there, wrong decimal. So, uh, and we went through, the county has a pretty good grasp on the, their culverts and the sizing on them and, and where they're at. And the, the bridges, as you know, over the 20 foot handled by at the state level, they have a pretty good grasp of it and the sizing on it. Uh, there was a couple issues on bridges that have been redone that landowners have testified about. Probably the one area that we found the discussion, we couldn't get the exact answers, was townships and how many culverts they got and where they're at and the size of the culverts. And uh, one of the references in the back will reference that discussion to go back into their upcoming meeting and, and push the township representatives to give you a better inventory of what they've got so you're aware of it in the county and through the GIS system that you have and the tracking of them, and hopefully you can track the flow of water a little bit during high water. Um, I'm not going to get a lot of detail unless somebody wants to add something to that that I've left out for questions. Uh, the next area we got in the discussion, and it always ends up this, is the item C was the conservation, environmental, and land use regulations. And, and, and this was every time that we thought we might have an idea of something that would work that we could recommend to you, it kind of came back to this, is, is all-encompassing control. And primarily where there's been easements sold off and uh, uh, NRCS or uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and what can be done on that land after that uh, easement's put on it. Uh, and some of these easements are 30-year easements. Uh, one big discussion we had with the city of Brookings uh, down south, they've owned some land and they have a, uh, an easement with 16 years left on it. And it's uh, right along South Madari, way south, and uh, that accumulates water. And we thought it would be great if we could, uh, Lyle thought it would be great, <laughs> if we could clean that out and move water down faster to get it to the river faster, but uh, as in, in the fact that the city owned it, it was even tougher with the easement requirements and the permission requirements and the Corps of Engineer requirements and everything that comes on. So those that kind of became the over-encompassing, and we, we did visit with uh, Jeff Vanderbilt from the NRCS office and discussed about these easements and what we can do in these easements and, and who can do it. Um, the bottom line is is that the county would be ex extremely difficult if if you get in to cleaning up land of uh, the requirements first off that you have uh, to on the easements the second the cost and the third item the legal liability that you assume when you get into it so we thought well then we you can help the landowners with this uh, on the easement issues, but then the landowner still has a requirement he needs to go back and uh, with his legal uh, attorney and with his, uh, uh, if anything has an easement on it, and needs to find out what he can do on it. Um, that led us into the discussion on municipal rural drainage. Uh, we ended up focusing, uh, there was the main issues we tried to focus, rather than having being so broad in our discussion, we focused south of uh, Brookings down to the Sioux River. In that area, and the S-curve south there, uh, habitually is an issue. And, and you've all had people come for you before about all the issues with the drainage. And we thought, well, we just need to visit with the city and, and that they're dumping water there and, and it's not moving out. And all those discussions that come about it. Um, so, we, and so we had, uh, city engineer's office, I mentioned Jackie Lanning came in and, and we talked about the city's water drainage and, and, and what they're doing and, and their planning on it and uh, their retention ponds that they're cre creating in new developments 
and all that and, and what's happening so it doesn't make the drainage south of town worse. Um, we got into the discussion then if we get if we get it past Brookings and we get it past there where they have an easement on the land south of town, then well maybe we can just clean out that drainage area to the Sioux River. Well the BMU then we had a discussion with where the new was sewer or the not new, the sewer treatment plant is. And that was they had sold that off in a wildlife a, a, a wetland easement. And so when they read did the sewer treatment plant, they had to get permission to do that because of the easement. Uh, and if we wanted to go through and clean that area out to move it faster to the river, uh, it probably isn't going to happen because of the easement that they got on it. So, so it comes up a, a kind of a blockage area that it just slows down. Now the, the real problem is, is, is you get the two conflicting interests. The reason, reason for those interests are to, to put the wetlands back and to hold water and to keep it for wildlife and and for cleaner water because it filters the water getting out and all that so so we want to move the water through there and there's a program specifically made to hold the water there so you end up with the two conflicting interests in there and, that, and that's what we keep running into all the time um, kind of the further discussion then on, on well, how could we drain the water and and what could the county do and what can landowners do? And that's that E, the districting and drainage, and drainage projects. Uh, the, uh, first off, the first comment we made is that a Brookings County drainage, pro drainage projects needs to benefit the entire county, not just a small group of people in one spot in the county. And, that, and that's kind of a parameter that we used on it. Uh, and then we talked about maybe allowing drainage districts for localized projects. Uh, we had determined that you as a county can't go in and drain and, and go start digging across the, lot, the land out there. So we have what, if the landowners do it, fine. Landowners don't have the means to do it, but maybe we could act as the entity, you as the county, to, uh, to run the project through and you could assess their taxes for 10 years, uh, spread it out, whatever form, uh, was what we investigated. And, and Ben did a lot of work in this area, investigating the drainage and water laws. And in the bottom line, he, come, he came back and said, hey, if you do this, the county assumes the, the task uh, or the legal liability. And uh, I just don't recommend that we cannot recommend to you that you should do that based on your legal liability, you assume. Uh, there had been over in um, uh, Kingsbury County a project done, and they, from uh, south of Lake Whitewood, they had uh, cleaned out a waterway and, and drained it and everything. Well, as, as we got in and we had a representative come over, uh, uh, Jason Peterson uh, with CDAI, who was the engineer in the project, and this was an old drainage project from the early 1900, 1911, 1914. They dug this drainage back then. They set up a, a drainage uh, entity, and that entity had never been dissolved. And so when the new 1985 laws came in, basically impeding you from creating these drainage districts, they were grandfathered in. And so they kind of resurrected that cleaned it out and assessed all the landowners along there and, and, and it worked perfect. But uh, so that is the one example we could find in South Dakota that, that did work. But uh, again, based on the 85 laws, the uh, Clean Water Act, everything else that's been created, it, it's almost impossible to do that today. Um, and, and that kind of comes back to why we couldn't do it in uh, And I'm just trying to, that was a real big summary of the next three pages is what that was, of why we can't do it. And again, uh, Ben is, our, is your expert and he was our expert on why we can't do this and legal clarification. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess he can go into it more involved at this time or with you at a separate time. But, uh, and you guys have had these discussions in the past, I believe, too. 
So did you yeah, want to make a comment? I can elaborate a little bit. Um, so, so again, I'm Ben Kleinjohn. I'm the Deputy State's Attorney here. Uh, I did graduate from Drake Law School 10 years ago, and I did get a certificate in agricultural law. Grew up here in Brookings County, so I'm, I've been having this sort of conversation about drainage my entire life, uh, and I will continue to have this kind of conversation for the rest of my life. Um, this is the final report of the committee, but it's not the final word on drainage. Uh, there may be some temptation by folks to just go and do it. Uh, you don't, that, that's not a good way to resolve drainage issues. The hard costs of uh, digging drainage channels and, and getting equipment aren't the problem. The problem is the soft costs, the permitting costs, uh, the, the jurisdictional problems. And of course, in this country, we have federalism. And so the federal government has some jurisdiction over navigable waters. It's been that way forever. Uh, but since the 70s is really when the federal government started to uh, tighten its grip on its jurisdiction. And it's never been tighter than, than it is right now. Um, there perhaps was an opportunity in the 80s to do projects like this uh, or, or larger drainage projects with minimal permitting requirements. Those, those days are gone. Uh, I don't envision they'll be coming back. However, there is still a mechanism where you can do drainage projects if you have the political willpower and the, and the financial resources to do it. But you have to engage with the Corps of Engineers. And it's a time-consuming, expensive, uh, costly process. That process may happen. I watched the, uh, the city council uh, forum on Saturday. Obviously, drainage is an issue in everybody's mind. Uh, and so that process may happen. That's part of the reinvestigate every on a periodic basis. Uh, that way, when the time comes where we have no other choice but to engage directly with the Corps of Engineers and try to solve some of these problems uh, in a more comprehensive way, we can. We'll be ready. Um, and so that's kind of the biggest, the biggest issue in my mind uh, is, that, is that federalism, that jurisdictional problem where uh, the federal government has decided that the Sioux River, the Big Sioux River is uh, under their jurisdiction and anybody that changes the water that's going into the Big Sioux River better, better uh, cooperate and get the appropriate permit, permitting. And particularly that's true if you're a governmental unit like the commission or like a district created under South Dakota state law, they especially have to follow those, those federal regulatory rules. Now, there's some private landowners uh, that have gotten away with some things uh, that have gone under the radar over the years. Um, we don't have that option, and we certainly don't have the option of allowing uh, any landowner to do something like that with, with commission money. And so that's, that's another uh, aspect to it. Uh, and so. I think this conversation is going to continue. Some of it depends on the administration. Um, there may be an opportunity in the future, but I, I'm envisioning continued uh, engagement with the city and with, the, with county stakeholders and eventually with those federal stakeholders uh, because the time will come when we don't really have any other choice. Uh, and I'm just, uh, at this point, it's not something that we have necessarily the ability to do, but but it may happen sometime in the future. Okay, thanks. What, I mean, what, what uh, do you are requesting from us? Uh, well, okay, if I might just go to page 11. The, the, we had 10 recommendations. You're fine. Yep. That's kind of what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, I mentioned continued drainage studies periodically, number two. Uh, we talked about the townships develop a robust inventory of culverts. Uh, I think then that's something specific that you can do with your townships right now. Uh, number three was coordinate with City of Brookings long-term planning, specifically land south of town with the easements that's coming off in, in 10 to 15 years. Uh, avoid issuing grants to, long, to landowners. So we're saying don't do the grant program. Uh, adopting a new drainage ordinance uh, was repealed in 11, and, and the bottom line discussion is that you're unable to create a new drainage ordinance right now under state law and federal law. Uh, six is you encourage landowners to clean out their ditches and their own waterways, but with a caveat that they need to make sure they can do it. And secondly, under the, the 2015 Clean Water Act, that they don't throw any of their f uh, stuff into the drainage, into the uh, the area. 
uh, consult. We talked about number eight. Uh, the entity of these, it's just you need, from your standpoint, you need to make sure that all of your bridges and culverts are the correct sizing and they're kept clean and all that, and then down to the township level. And uh, the big discussion there is that you need to probably work with the townships, and we recommend that it be research if they can give them further assistance. Uh, nothing new to you. Their mm -hmm. budgets are almost minimal, and they d physically don't have the ability to do anything unless they do the work themselves. So uh, that would probably be one specific item I think that you could be looking at going forward. Uh, the other one is that the drainage laws in the state needs to be changed. Uh, I was on a three-year task force at the legislature and uh, ultimate futility, and I thought we were on the correct direction. You, you all should not be managing drains drainage and uh, it should be done on a statewide basis and that's where back but then we had set up the seven drainage districts uh, river water basins and that's how it needs to be managed uh, and the, the at the end of that we did get those seven districts set up and then it stalled at the state level but that needs and somehow th you through the county need to go back, I think, at, at, with all the counties and and really push this issue. Uh, it's, it's a difficult issue, but the only way it's ever going to be solved is if the state steps in and, and, and changes our ordinances. And then the, another uh, immediate thing that can be done is that, uh, education materials, drainage seminars. Uh, Jay with East Dakota Water Development District volunteered the district. They, they could provide some resources. They could provide, if you want to put some seminars on what's going on. Uh, and then the, the bottom line question is if it dries up now going forward, you probably aren't going to have a lot of people at the meetings or worried about it if, if we have rain. So so that was it. Uh, uh, we, we spent. We, I think we looked really in depth at the issues and, and we, we truly tried to find some uh, solutions. Uh, and just every one we came at was just kind of like, well, yeah, it's a great idea, but. So did anybody else, did you want to make a comment, Lionel, at all? Well, I guess the thing I would, I would say is, you know, it's really disappointing to get down to the point and learn that we've governed ourselves out of options. And uh, because the rain keeps coming, the problem's still there. People's homes are being uh, damaged. Uh, None of that's changed. None of that's going to change until, but we have the ability to change that if we figure out this solution. Because the people downstream, what we didn't get in the report was I went down, I on my little project there, I got ourselves a quote from two different people. So from the Sioux River to 32nd Street, which is, I don't know where that is, was like $50,000. Two quotes to clean that out. Well, you guys can't participate in that, but the but the amount is pretty minimal, and that's a huge problem. With because that's where all the water from Brookings Dang there goes down to that. There's a little waterway to the east, and then there's some to the west, but that's the big majority of the city. So with all these roadblocks, I still think that now we're in a drought, cleaning these waterways out would be very, very inexpensive. And so I think that it's something that should get, like Spence said, attention. Because, you know, it's going to flood again and then we're going to stand around and say the same thing over, unless we figure it out. And I'm sure there's got to be a way. But these are the obstacles. That's really what we found was the obstacles. And we also found that, you know, I think that cost is, you know, so relatively small compared to what we're thinking in the past. This is just dealing with the rushes and the reeds, not dealing with wetlands. It's just putting the 
uh, drainage way back to the original flow line. And it's so I really do want to encourage you to really take a really hard look at this because now we could do a lot of good for a little bit of money if we can get it figured out. Other than that? Uh, if, if You do need to put a caveat. You can do a lot for a little bit of money if you don't get involved. <laughs> it, it, truly. That's, that's true. Once you're in, you're right? going to have to do the studies. You're going to have to get banners. You're going to have to go to the core and everything. And somehow it needs to focus down to the landowner mm -hmm. level is where it's going to have to do. And I don't know how you do that. Spence, is that kind of what happened with the seven districts that, that you were involved with that they got set up and it sort of just the, okay. dissolved? In my know, opinion. Is, is that still an ordinance that's there to create those districts? Or yeah, that the, just the, completely the go seven away? districts were there and, and it, it turned into a feeling that the, what was trying to happen was to create an anti-tiling legislation it is kind of what happened. Uh, we had a meeting in, a, in a Mitchell, uh, 100 farmers, landowners showed up. And it was almost like a lynching mob. And, and uh, one guy said, I've bought three tiling machines, and, and I'm going to tile everything before you blank blanks shut me off. And, and that's what the attitude was. So I mean, it, which that task force was not there. It was a drainage discussion. And, but it, it evolves to that level so quickly, and then they just shut it down so that so nothing could develop further. So I, we need to get past that in, 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 the, in the real answer. And, and the state still needs to push forward. Every, count, every state around us manages theirs by a, a water basin and the drainage of the water basin. We are the only state in our area with all of our surrounding states managing it at the county level. And as you know, you're not doing that because you've all had to back out of it. Uh, and you've got the one up the north is just getting, if they didn't already abandon their ordinances, they're going to abandon their ordinance here real shortly. So uh, it's, a, it's to me, and it's, the pressure's got to come back, I think, from the counties that something has to happen. I want to, the reason why we worked on the south part of the county is because Mr. Sampson had the, the stuff up here and all of the, you know, 90% or whatever, the disaster events in the last two years were there. I mean, it was red blotch. So that's really where the focus is. And number two, I would like to mention that you have a bunch of landowners out that are eager to get some help in any way. And I think what, what we've learned is we can pull this together and we can find the information and get the right information and make sure these guys get that. Because they're, they're eager, the townships are eager to get some information that they can go forward with. So I think that that's the study to get that information of some way that they can do that. Because they're the ones suffering. They're the mm -hmm. ones suffering. <clears throat> so we've got some good help there if we can just figure it out. Other comments? Ms. Pierce? Just a couple of things. As an elected official and as a lawyer myself, I hate it when people say, we can't do something that is a good choice because of a law. And we know from other projects that we've worked on that if we start talking about things with our legislators, with our congressmen, with our senator, we're, when we're talking about the Clean Water Act, and talk about the problem that the current rules make for us. And I like what Lyle said about it being a roadblock. Well, roadblocks, you can move the barrier and then you can have free flow, right? We can change those laws. We just have to keep talking about it. And when we reach out to our intergovernmental groups and stuff, this should be one of our topics that we put on the list to say, we need to fix the drainage laws. 
We need to work together. We got to fix that Clean Water Act so we can use our natural waterways. We're not asking to drain the areas with the easements. We just want the natural waterways to be opened up where, there, where there's stuff in there that's not supposed to be there so water flows where it's supposed to flow. And I think if we start talking about it and we make a practice of telling people about it, maybe eventually somebody will listen, they'll go to Pierre, maybe it'll go to Washington, maybe we'll get something done. But it's got to start at our level if we want to fix that. that. But the thing, the other thing we can do now is and maybe Brian would be willing to come back and give us a report at some point about what our policy is on our county culverts. I'd like to know how are we making sure that we're not contributing to the problem where we have free flow of water in the ditches out in the county. We just need to be sure, and I'm not 100% sure myself, how we make sure that that happens. And then the last thing I'd like to say is I want to thank all of you guys. You know, you just did a wonderful job. We had interesting meetings. We had public participation. Ben did a fantastic job on this report. And thank you all for the, the help you did in participating on this. That's all we have. All right, Chair. And if I may, Council of Pikey on this, I started the report this week. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I don't want to take this question. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Want to do bevs? Um move on to item d following drainage committee uh, register of deeds 2020 year-end report good morning good morning um on on the screen there is the um spreadsheet that i did a comparison between 2020 and 2019, so it's got all the totals on there. The first line is the transfer fee, and in 2020, we had $200,002.50. That is a decrease comparing to uh, 19 of $5,482. General fees is on the second line, and that is uh, general fees is the $30 per document that we charge for the recording. Fees. It is also UCC financing statements, and we had one location notice this in 2020. Um, the total was $205,724 compared to $151,181.75. We had an increase in recording for $54,542.25. The third line is the marriage licenses. That basically stayed the same, um, $8,560 compared to $8,680. Certified copies, that's um, birth, death, and marriage certificate, certified copies of those. Um, the fee is $15 each, and we issued 2438 for a total of $36,570. We decreased by $4,185. Copies and discs, um, the copies uh, are the physical transfers, which is the PTs of the, um, that we give uh, or sell copies to Farm Service Agency in Brookings, and also the Farm Credit uh, Services in Watertown. And um, also it includes the copies that the title companies get. And that was $7,349, um, an increase of $3,385. We can go further down. Um, the, next, the next section there with general fees is um, just kind of a breakdown of the total um, finance. The UCCs was 478, decreased by 197. And then, like I said, we had one location notice. Um, the next section is the certified copies, uh, the total for the birth, death, and marriage um, broken down. And 
the next section is the um, general fees. And out of those uh, general fees, which are the recording fees, is, comes the tech fee, comes out of that, which is $5 per document. Um, $3 of that um, $5 stays in the county, and $2 we send to the uh, state, which is the South Dakota Association of County uh, Officials. They keep track. Every, every county does that. And in August, what the state receives is divided among the counties, the 66 counties, and we each got $5,094.20 of that back. That was passed by the legislature to, to help the counties, um, the registered deeds offices, with the technology that every county needs to have and not every county can af afford it. So um, it's, a, it's a great thing for our office to be able to um, purchase software and computers and the, the um, technology that we need to preserve the documents. Um, if we go down further there, um, where it says certified copies are broken down in like that fourth section. Um, for the county share, we keep, we keep $5 of each birth and death certificate that we issue, and we keep the entire $15 of each marriage certificate that we issue. And um, that's broken on, down on that. We kept $15,980 in the county, and the state was received $20,590. The marriage licenses that we issue is broken down to $30 of each marriage license. The license costs $40. $30 of that stays to and goes to our local domestic abuse shelter. And $10 stays in the, in the county for the general fund. Um, and at the, at the end there, I have broken it down and, and um, included what stays in the county and um, added that tech feedback in. And I have it. I don't think that's in its entirety. And I think, yeah, go a little bit farther up there. Thank you, Stacy. And there's the total compared to 20 from 2020 to 2019, what actually stays in the county. Um, a lot of the um, increase, of course, was with our real estate documents. Um, on, I have included the second sheet there is just what's broken down for the each month. As you can see, the, um, January and February is typically our, our slower months. But as you went through the year, you can see how much it increased. From January 2020, we did $23,913.50. We go with, oh, then to December, we did $49,140.50. Um, the interest rates and lots of many, many, many people refinanced. Um, which increased our mortgage recording. Um, it also increased our miscellaneous documents, which includes satisfactions of mortgages, addendums, continuations, all that type of thing that is included with mortgages. Um, and on the, the last page that I've included, there is just uh, comparison of 2020 and 2019 of the different types of documents and um, how many how many records we recorded and how many pages there was. I keep track of the pages because um, one of the title companies purchases copies and they are they pay per page. So I keep track of that. Any questions? Ms. Pierce, I have two questions. Okay. Thank you for the report. That's all good news. Any any update on when we might be looking at electronic 
recording on our deeds? I have been talking a, a bit with one of the companies, um, Simplifile. I'm impressed with their uh, process. Are there other counties in the state that are using that? Yes, that is the most popular one in the state. And I have talked with other registers of deeds, and you can have more than one company, um, but most of their documents go through the Simplifile. And is and that with Tyler, or is that with somebody entirely? Is that with Tyler, or is that with somebody entirely different? No, it's an entirely different. Mm -hmm. It's a when when a bank, let's say a bank, um, would like to do e-recording, they have to go to a company that um, kind of like a portal. I don't like to use that term, but kind of like a portal. And they send the, the documents to that company who then checks it over, uh, receives the payment, then they send, then that company sends it to the registers of deeds offices and we check it over to make sure that everything is correct and we either can accept it or, de or decline it, reject it. But uh, according to state law, we have to have that company or portal in order to do that. And then my second question has to do with the bill that I think came out of your state organization on the marriage license uh, requirements and the unintended consequences where women can't assume their maiden name in a divorce decree any longer. And I understand that there's going to be maybe a new bill that'll come back to fix that problem next year. But what, what I'm seeing is a lot of conversation about changing the marriage laws and maybe modernizing those for the state. Is your organization working on that? And are you gonna keep us updated on that? Um, that bill was actually brought forward by, this, by a representative from Minnehaha County. She came and talked to our group to see what um, the majority was in favor of doing, and it did get kind, did get changed from the original intent. Um, the intent was there are surrounding states that have on their marriage licenses and on their certified copies what the parties intend to use as their last name after marriage. Um, our certified copies of, of marriage, when they, when they come and get their certified copy after they've gotten married, has only their names on prior to marriage. So some of the people that are married in South Dakota and live in another state have had difficulty with their driver's license, uh, to just you know mention one. Um, accepting the certified copy from South Dakota because it does not specify the intended name. That was the intent of the bill to begin with, to change our marriage license application and the certified copy to reflect that. There has been some the way it ended up, it is difficult to interpret the correct or the the intent. And I know there has been people that have perhaps misinterpreted it, so there that needs to be cleaned up. And I think the governor came out at the end of last week and said that she's supporting some legislation to fix that next year. But I was just curious about how that process would work because I think there are going to be some other things that will be changed that will impact your office when, when that, because all this conversation looking at this bill now really does highlight some of the things in, in, in South Dakota law and marriage licenses that are really antiquated. So They haven't been changed for a long yeah. time. 
Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bob. Misty? Good morning. Good morning. I'll be short and sweet. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know our truck drivers um, are, I, don't, I should word this different, our half part-time highway department, part-time way department truck drivers are coming back next week. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, April 12th. And then we also did get two ATV drivers hired. Um, one's not going to be able to start until April 19th, and then the other one will be starting May 11th. So kudos to that. So next week, we'll go gung-ho at getting our vehicles out of cold storage, putting them, making sure everything's the way it should be, road ready and... Well, you'll see the guys out there doing pocket gophers also because they're digging. It's been beautiful. Otherwise, I don't have anything else at this point. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Thanks. Marty? Morning. Good morning. Just a quick overview. Jail statistics, we have 34 and presently in jail. And uh, with 24-7 is, is uh, gradually increasing. We have 104 participants. I have 37 that come in twice a day. Uh, have two on a drug patch. Uh, we have uh, nine on remote breath test. And a remote breath test is where we put a gadget in their car and they have to blow every so often to keep their car running. Or if they don't blow it disables the car. Um, <clears throat> we have four on work release. I have, we have nine, nine individuals on GPS. So uh, we've, <clears throat> we've uh, went back in our 24-7 program. We had kind of loosened up a little bit with COVID about um, uh, if they violate, depending on the uh, uh, charge that they are, that uh, violation on a minor uh, charge, and if they it, it blew hot or something, and they weren't that intoxic they weren't intoxicated and stuff, we we gave them a warning. Where we're back to, you know, if they blow hot, they they stay in jail. And we already had individuals who were kind of taking advantage of us when they knew they might get a break, and uh, uh, so forth. So we're back to when they violate, they they stay in jail for 48 hours. So uh, just a couple things, and just to make you aware of, and I did send out emails. A while back, and if you're like me, you, you, you probably don't read everyone word word by word. But just for your information, there's been a couple counties already, and there might be more. Bennett County and Fall River, uh, their county commissions had uh, uh, um, did resolutions on on First Amendment or excuse me, Second Amendment, that they are sanctuary counties. In other words, that uh, uh, they said that they wouldn't assist with uh, the feds if on gun confiscations or something like that, or executive orders. I should say executive orders. Just something to be aware of. Of course, I know a resolution is, don't has a lot of teeth in it, but um, you know, just something to think about. Just the fact is that we own a gun range, and we're into you know, uh, law-abiding citizens should be able to, we should protect their Second Amendments. And, and uh, I think we do a good job with, uh, with the OAC with recognition you know, for fun shooting and then for basic uh, safety in that. So it's, it's these resolutions for, especially out west, is because they're a large hunting area and, and there's guns and they, you know, it brings in a lot of money to those counties. So just, just for your information, that's, uh, I don't know if, if you will see more of that coming around or not. Um, also, uh, I have staff working on, on schedules. They're scheduling basically... Uh, I don't think you're probably too worried about how we're going to schedule when it comes to the new jail and those types of things. I'm sure you're more worried about what the cost is. And so uh, we got some preliminary figures. I want them to run a couple other areas before we present it to at least a couple of you commissioners first and see if we're in the right direction. You know, there's always been a talk with uh, part-time employees. And, and we, we struggle with part-time employees. You know, we probably... Uh, 
we probably hire 10 a year, maybe, maybe more. And there's a cost to training, and we have them for a short time. If I can keep a part-time employee two years, that's, that's, that's beneficial for us or a good thing. Um, you know, we always were talking about leaning towards more to full-time employees, you know. So, you know, that's what we're trying to going to present to you, um, you know, some cost savings by going part-time. You know, there, there may be some sticker shock here. Um, because uh, uh, with a bigger uh, facility, and naturally we're going to have to have more full-time, we're going to have to have more staff. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, if I have 30 inmates or, or 60 inmates, it's going to take the same amount of staff to, to run the place. So, we're, again, we're, we're, we got some preliminary stuff. There's a couple more uh, <clears throat> uh, areas I want them to, to explore and try to come back with some cost savings I don't know, you know, versus uh, having 18 full-time people, uh, excuse me, uh, 18 part-time people trying to fill in some some areas with um, uh, full-time. Uh, and so uh, well, they're just, uh, we're probably running out of little time here because we're going to be working on 22 budgets. You know, we're going to have to worry about when are we going to open the jail? Are we going to open it November 1st? So are we going to have November, December costs and when are we going to start to hire am i going to start to hire in september to get people trained so when the new jail opens they'll be ready to you know i'm hoping that some of the present staff i have part-time have indicated that they would like to go full-time so that will help on training costs and, and so forth so just that's kind of the, some of the things we're working on also i just uh, touched a little bit on we had an emergency committal uh, friday night uh, uh, we had a little glitch at the hospital. Uh, uh, this person, uh, uh, the glitch was we couldn't find a bed. They couldn't find a bed for this person. Yankton was full, and Avira uh, was full, apparently. Uh, didn't want to take this individual. This individual was causing a disturbance at the, at the hospital um, to some degree, um, but they wanted to push, and I shouldn't say push, they wanted to, since there was no beds, they wanted the, the jail to take them. And the jail, for this particular person, the jail was not the right atmosphere. First of all, I didn't, the person also had a wheelchair. Uh, all I had was isolation cells. This, this person, it wasn't, it wasn't a good fit, but it ended up being that they were able to place the person um, at a Vera. But we just had a little glitch. Bart's working on a report, and I'm gonna give it to all of you because I think you should be aware of the report we weren't very treated very well with some hospital staff on this. And, and uh, uh, Bart held his ground. He called me, and I says, I'll back you up on, on, which, on your decision. We said that we had put a guard on this person and, and everything, but uh, uh, jail was not the place for this. Statute 27A-10-1-2 says the jail is not an appropriate place for people with mental illness. It is, could be a last resort. In other words, if everything's exhausted, but the problem I have right now is this, I just didn't have a space for it. Even if she would have been charged with a crime, I don't know why, I still wouldn't have taken this person. I was gonna to have to stay at the hospital and, and then put guards on, on the person, but just to make you aware. Um, I know the hospital was flush, frustrated uh, because they've dealt with this person before. My office, we have dealt with this person before too, so there's, there was a lot of frustration on both sides. But uh, anyway, but just, but I'll get you guys a report that you can, can look at and stuff. So, uh, Other than that, uh, unless you have, you have some questions, Bart and myself will be uh, uh, at a sheriff's conference the 19th through the 22nd along with the police chiefs. And I look for a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on. There's, a, there's a correctional officer training for Bart. And then uh, I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot about the marijuana stuff and, and things like that. So it's probably going to be a worthwhile convention. So, Do you have any questions? I have a question. Is the hospital honoring our agreement that when we have someone that's an involuntary commitment that they make a safe room available and we provide the guarding? No. Then that maybe needs to be a conversation that we have outside of what's going on with this individual person because that is the agreement that we had with the hospital. Yeah. And see, that's the issue. The, <clears throat> They don't have a safe room. They talk about a safe room, but it's a safe exam room. It's not a safe room where the person 
has a bed that they can lay on and, and be sedated and, and this type, uh, type of stuff. So they don't have, you know, uh, in, in, in the new facility we do have that capability. Uh, in this particular case, I don't even know if with my safe room, and I say my safe room, the county safe room, when we build it, if I still wouldn't have taken this, this person needed to be in a medical setting to be watched continuously by staff and make sure her blood pressure and things didn't happen. It, uh, and uh, we were willing to put guards up there if that was an issue. Uh, you know, the city police was up there. They brought her in. And, uh, um, you know, we offered to, to put guards on this person. But, again, uh, they were able to, to, to get him into a Vera. So then uh, two deputies transported this individual to... to uh, uh, that's the only thing with the safe room is that they, you know, this is something that's not new. We've been, I've been dealing this ever since I've been elected sheriff, and even prior to when I was on the police department, is that, you know, these, the safe room, I always wanted the hospital to have a designated safe room, but uh, again, and I understand they're, they're, they're not a mental health facility, but the jail is not a mental health facility either, so, but and, it's just one of those. And I don't know what staff turnover there's been there and who everybody's working with and all of that. But that was our agreement when we gave the hospital all that money that we were going to have that problem worked out. And if we need to go back and, and have another conversation and review what our conversations were before, and I think we have that in writing, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I think that's in the procedures that the hospital drafted at that time, but that's just my recollection. Our staff shouldn't have to put up with that. It's, it is hard enough for law enforcement to deal with mentally ill people without also having to have an adversarial uh, conversation out at the hospital at the same time. And, and maybe um, if that's an issue, maybe we need to be working with our liaison to, to have that reviewed. <laughs> Sorry, I think, Brian. I think once the report is handed out to everybody and everybody mm -hmm. can understand it was in the report, uh, maybe the individual at the hospital wasn't aware of our agreement and uh, exactly. hopefully it can be reviewed and, you know, move forward from there. And there was a lot of frustration. I understand it. What's good about this, it, it doesn't happen real often. Mm -hmm. This is just one of those cases that did mm -hmm. come up, but there's just a lot of, uh, when they do come up, it, you know, my job is to try to keep us with, protect you, the county for exposure, you know, and uh, uh, I don't want anybody to, to, you know, get hurt in, in our jail at presently, especially when it's not, suitable right now for this type type of person but i'm not so sure that i would have accepted this even with our safe rooms before it, it needed to be in the medical medical type area so and i'm saying the hospital you know it it, it, it it's uh, um, you know a lot of times these things work out it but there's just there was a lot of frustration you could tell there was a lot of frustration on 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 their part up there because they were trying to deal with this person too and 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 uh, they were just looking for a place to put her, and so, but. And it's always training when you have a turnover in personnel, which maybe has happened. Yeah, yeah. So, and the, the biggest thing is that we're, we're trying to train law enforcement to recognize these individuals as having a mental health um, episode and not a criminal episode, and, you know, and they're talking about charging the person up there, says you have to take her once we charge her. If I don't have a place for her, I can't. I'm not going to, I'm still not going to do it. I would, I still would have kept her, said, we, she needs to stay at the hospital. I'll put a guard on her at the hospital. Okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll keep, keep moving. So it wasn't going to be short or sweet, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get us a report. <laughs> Moving on to regular business, item number eight, action approved resolution number 21-11. A federal aid bridge program resolution for county and urban projects for structure number 06-210-198. We have a motion to approve. So move approval. Second. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Comments? And these are the seven projects that you presented to us earlier, correct? I'm turn your microphone on. Um, you'll see the first rank there is the uh, the 
big score in that first column on the left or towards the left. That's uh, the ranking according to the modified big score. And then the ranking on the far right, uh, that just ranks, you know, where it sits at as far as what, what it costs the county. Okay. So just wanted to point that out also. All right. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item B, action approved resolution number 21-12, a federal aid bridge program resolution for county and urban projects for structure number 06-248-040. Do I have a motion approved? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. This is Any other? county system, or county road system and county road. And what, what was its ranking? I'm trying to bring that little sheet back up. So uh, that it. was uh, rank seven. Thank the you. The first one that you approved was rank six. Okay. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item C, action approved resolution number 21-13, a federal aid bridge program resolution for county in urban projects for structure number 06-160-017. Do I have a motion approved? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, this is in Eureka Township and the modified big, big score ranks second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item D, action approved resolution number 21-14, a federal aid bridge program resolution for county and urban projects for structure number 06-287-040. Do I have motion approved? Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. This is on our Brookings County Road 44, and this ranks first according to the modified big score. Okay. Call the roll, please. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item E, action to approve resolution number 21-15, a federal aid bridge program resolution for county and urban projects for structure number 06-190-041. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Right. Comments? This is on in Argo Township and it ranks fourth on, according to the modified big score. Call the roll, please. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item F, action approved resolution number 21-16, a federal aid bridge program resolution for county and urban projects for structure number 06-209-100. Have motion approved. So moved. Second. Have motion and a second. This is in Austin Township and... We applied for this bridge also last year because the grant we did receive was uh, in very close proximity to the one that uh, we got last year. Okay. Call the roll, please. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item G, action approved resolution number 21-17, a federal aid bridge program re resolution for county and urban projects. For structure 06-140-021, they have a motion approved. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Eureka Township, and that ranks fifth according to the modified, modified big score. Okay. Call the roll, please. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item H, action approve abatement number 21-1. One two, an abatement application made by Madison Aircraft LLC for parcel number four zero nine nine one dash four zero 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 five dash zero 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 dash two zero in the amount of one thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars and ninety one cents. Do I have a motion approved? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item I, action approve agreement number 21-40, State of South Dakota Department of Transportation Bridge Improvement Grant Agreement for Rehab or Replacement 
Local Administration for Structure Number 06280172. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Comments? This is a grant we recently received here in February on Brookings County Road Number 35. And do we have our cost on that already in the budget? Yeah, we had it in the five year plan. Call the roll, please. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item J, action approve agreement number 21 41, the State of South Dakota Department of Transportation Bridge Improvement Grant Agreement for Rehab Replacement, Local Administration for Structure number 06. 227-230. Have motion to approve. So moved. Second. Have motion to second. Comments? This is a structure. Again, we were awarded a big grant recently on uh, in February, and this is south of Aurora in Trenton Township, and a Trenton or it uh, lays on a Trenton Township road. Okay. Call the roll, please. Pierce. Aye. Bartley. Aye. Krogman. Aye. Forsma? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item K, action to approve agreement number 21-42, an agreement for voluntary right-of-way donation between Brookings County and Ron Knutson. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Comments? This is a structure I mentioned earlier, uh, be north of Volga on County Road 5. Um, it's structure 06-100-122-U. And we will be looking at replacing this structure sometime this summer. And at that point in time, I will give you guys an update before we do start that project. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item L, action approve agreement number 21-43, an agreement for voluntary right-of-way donation between Brookings County and and John and Mary Highlands have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. They have a motion and a second. Same project. All those in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item M, action approve agreement number 21-44, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy and Madari Township. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have this a motion and a second. Any comments? This is part of their project. They're doing uh, going from overhead to underground. And then the next few of them are the same comments? Uh, the next one is the same, and then, then we get into the valley. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item N. Action approve agreement number 21-45, an application for occupancy of right-of-way of county highways made by Sioux Valley Energy and Madari Township. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments uh, similar to the last. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Pull the same sign. Motion carried. Item zero. Or O. Action and approve agreement number 21-46, an application of occupancy of right-of-way, county highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road 1. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the uh, Volga segment of uh, Valley Telecommunications uh, buried fiber optic line. And... Uh, I don't know if Stacy mentioned it, but I do. I did require them to obtain, or the contractor to obtain, a fifty thousand dollar bond uh, in case our infrastructure would get damaged in the installation process. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item P: Action approve agreement number twenty one forty seven. An application occupancy of right of way, county highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co op on County Road 3. I have a motion approved. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item Q. Action and approve agreement number 21 48. An application 
of occupancy of right of way county highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co op on County Road Number Four. Motion approved. So moved. Second. And motion and a second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item R, action approval agreement number 21-49, an application of occupancy of right-of-way of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road 5. Approval. Have motion approval. approved. Approval, approval. Second. Have motion and a second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item S, action approval agreement number 21-50, an application of occupancy right away of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road Number Six. Have a motion approved. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item T, action approve agreement number twenty-one dash fifty-one. An application of occupancy. Right away of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co op on County Road Number 7. Motion approved. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item U, action and approve agreement number 21 52, an act, application of occupancy right away of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co op on County Road 8. Do I have a motion approved? Move so approval. Moved. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item V, action to approve agreement number 21-53, an application of occupancy of the right-of-way of County Highway, made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road 10. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. W, action approve agreement number 21-54, an application of occupancy of a county highway. A county highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road number 12. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item X, action to approve agreement number 21-55, an application of occupancy of right-of-way of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road number 13. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carried. Item Y, action to approve agreement number 21-55. 56, an application of occupancy of right-of-way of County Highway made by Valley Telecommunications Co-op on County Road 16. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item Z. I think we covered all the county roads now, haven't we, Brian? <laughs> Action approved the low bid from Diamond Surface Incorporated for the 2021 Brookings County Concrete Pavement Rehab Project at the bid amount of $767,762.98. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments? Yeah, you can see the uh, engineer's estimate here from IMAG was 783,562.30, so we did come in uh, lower than the estimate. Um, I had asked the city of Aurora officials if they wanted to attend this bid opening, uh, just to kind of get an idea of what we were looking at, but uh, after talking with um, IMAG, uh, IMAG representatives and, and Larry, I think, at some point in time here, I know we're going to be getting the approval today, and then we'll get uh, some of the contract documents in place. And then at that time, we're going to have a pre-con uh, with the city of Aurora, um, just so everybody knows what's going on out there and the construction schedule. So at this point in time, uh, this is just the first step in the process to be approving the contract of Diamond Surfacing Inc. And this is County Road 23 from Highway 14 to 
324. The 324. Any other questions? Hearing none, call the roll call. Aye. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item AA, action approve the purchase of a mobile fingerprint, com fingerprint computer system. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments? Good morning again. Just, uh, <clears throat> I can give you a big song and dance about this, but I'll try to just give you a, a short portion is that um, uh, <clears throat> the fingerprint machine we have now is a large fingerprint machine, and it's not movable. I mean, um, it is movable if you, if, if, if you wanted to put it in the new facility um, uh, when we come. Uh, and you got, it's got to be hooked up to the state and so forth. So it's not, it's not portable where I could just take it one day and move it. But, and now they have a, a portable machine is that uh, we do a lot of civilian prints. Now, normally we do around about $8,000 in civilian prints. Now, last year is probably, it's probably down just due to the fact of um, COVID and so forth. So around, we do, um, you know, all the uh, uh, nurses, a big portion of the nurses, um, also uh, any teachers and things. We do a lot of civilian prints. And right now we got a, it's so hectic right now with civilian prints because, uh, uh, they have to come into the front, and we got to escort them back, and and uh, uh, so forth. Now, when we get the new um, expansion, the fingerprint machine is going to be back in the book-in area. So now we're going to bring civilians back into the book-in area because because when we do civil or do prints for uh, inmates or for ones that have been arrested, of course we want them in a confined area. So so with this portable one, I can put them up. Put that anywhere. I can put it up in the front lobby or whatever. Uh, it can be taken out to um, um, OAC uh, for public relations. Uh, when they do the enhanced, we can do them, do them out there and so forth. Also, um, <clears throat> I want to try to restrict some of the Class 1 misdemeanors that are coming in. Um, a lot of times off the interstate, the troopers and so forth want to, want to bring in uh, uh, revoked driver's license and those types of ones are Class 1s, but they're really a low-grade Class 1. The problem is, is they have to be fingerprinted. So if we write tickets to them and just give them a court date without having to bring them into jail and do a, do a PR bond and all that, we have to, at court date, then they're going to be instructed to come over and get their fingerprints. Well, some come over and some don't. You know, over COVID, um, <clears throat> there was a lot of class ones that we didn't get fingerprinted and they were supposed to come and now we're going to have to find them and, and bring them in for fingerprints. One of the things with this is, and I talked to Judge Stoltenberg about it, is that on third floor where that kind of that uh, waiting area is for drug court, actually on court date, we could, I could put a correctional officer in there with this and do the fingerprints out of that room. That way we got them because they're already there for court and then we could just, just do them there. So, um, you know, I... Uh, I'm not going to say that I can absorb this in my budget because my budget is going to be low anyway, just for the fact is that if we open up the expansion, we're going to have to put money in my budget anyway. So that's, in, in, in a nutshell, it's just going to be more convenient. I can place this anywhere to do the fingerprints. So it's portable. It's just a smaller machine, and it's not even that big. It's just a, a small one. So that's, that's, that's what I'm looking to do. So essentially, will you have two then? Pardon? Will you have two fingerprint machines then? Yeah, we'll have yeah. the big one. That, that's, for, that, that's on a grant through, through uh, the South Dakota, um, yeah. through South Dakota. But this one, uh, of course, we have to pay for the line to peer and so forth for, for the for the big machine. But my biggest thing is just having to bring these civilians into, you know, into the uh, security area. And of course, that room right now is we use it for everything. And uh, on hectic days, when we're fingerprinting inmates and, and new arrests, and then we got fingerprints coming in, it gets to be gets to be hectic. And uh, this seems uh, 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 there's just it, there's just a lot of lot of a lot of 
confusion, not confusion, but it's just a lot of uh, uh, waiting. You know, civilians have to wait until I get the inmate out of that room and so forth, and then we're doing UAs in that room. It's that juvenile holdover room that we started as a juvenile hold room. That's the fingerprint room, but we use that for everything. You know, fingerprinting, uh, the nurses meet with inmates in there. It's just, it's just kind of hectic. So okay. where this now we could, I could put this up in the front lobby and actually Heather, uh, both Heather and Matt, both my um, uh, front lobby people uh, uh, came out of the correction see, so they could fingerprint if we had to. You know, they could do some fingerprinting up front. So. Any other questions? I just was wondering, how do you download off the portable then into the state system? It just go, it, we just put it, it just download it onto a printer, and then print it, print the print them out. So we'll have a printer with this. I'm going to work with um, um, they they uh, uh, they uh, estimated a printer a quote for a printer too. But I'm going to work with Sean um, and see if uh, uh, any of our printers are capable. They have certain requirements for a printer and uh, just see if any of our printers are capable. Otherwise, I'll, I'll buy the printer that goes, goes with this. So, uh, so but what you do is you can, you, can, uh, <clears throat> you can put them in. Let's say that if we wanted to uh, go out to the OAC and um, uh, we could take the printer along with us, do the prints, and then we can just put them right on to... Because civilian prints don't go to here. They don't go to the here. So we can just uh, print off the prints and just hand it to the person. But if you're doing the class one misdemeanors up on third floor, up on third floor, what we we would do up there is is that we would just uh, uh, do the prints and then bring the machine back to our place uh, and then print off the uh, print off the prints and then just mail them to Pierre. I, I I guess what my question is, I, I'm not opposed to to this. It's um, are we jumping the gun there? If, is it going to need any special cabling or anything like no, that long term no. that it would impact on what we're doing on the no. remodel? No. And and um, I'm concerned, and I'm looking forward to hearing what your proposal is on the FTEs you're going to need. If you have a mobile one set up for civilians, and you've got one over in the booking area for defendants, are you going to need extra people to staff this mobile one? Well, you'd have to, somebody on staff could run that. Actually, my, I'm thinking about at this time putting it in a 24-7 area, which they'll have a staff in there. Uh -huh. And they actually my 24-7 person probably could do the finger, do that, do the civilian prints out of the 24-7 area. Okay. Because, you know, with 24-7, that's going to be separate from booking and everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be times when people come in. See, because on 24-7, a lot of, the blowing ones that blow into our, our machine, they come in, you know, six to nine, and then they don't come back from six to nine. And of course, then there's there's UAs and stuff. But in between times, there's there's time to do the uh, do the printing. So I'm not looking for additional staff just to run the civilian prints, if that makes sense. That was the question. Yeah. Other questions? Call the roll, please. Krogman? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Item, thank you. Item thank B. you. Thank you. My staff you. is going to be happy. <laughs> action B, B, action approve a request to fill vacancy for the BCOAC assistant at the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center. I have a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? Uh, so this is the new position I've been asking for. Um, we changed the title to BCOAC assistant instead of office manager. Uh, it's also a grade four, uh, which last time I presented a grade five. But everything else stayed the same. Stacy, I don't have my wage chart. Can you tell me what um, what grade four is? Yes. Seventeen fifty seven. Thank you. <clears throat> per hour, seventeen dollars and fifty cents per hour. So you can see on what I have up on the screen now is the budget impact for this year yet. 
So you can see that the full year, the budget impact would have been about 25.5, but we're looking at closer to that eight months. I mean, by the time we get this advertised and get somebody on board it, it would probably be closer to that May time frame. So we're looking at a budget impact of about 17,000. And I know there's maybe some reduction in part-time hours and whatnot that this will help, um, I think, but Dustin plans to handle that within his budget this year. Any other questions? What do you start the advertising? We would start advertising probably today if you approve it. Okay. Thank you. No other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Item CC, action to approve a request to fill vacancy for a senior finance assistant in the finance office. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? These Actually, these next three vacancy requests are due to either resignations or promotions within departments, and then there's a position to fill. So that's what these next three are for. Okay. Lori, any comments? Sure. Um, the first one is to replace a position that was formerly mine when I moved into the finance position. Um, the second one is to fill a front desk position. That gal moved back to my position. Um, she started last week and is doing great, so. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item D, D, action to approve a request to fill vacancy for a finance assistant in the finance office. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say them five by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Letter E, E, action to approve a request to fill vacancy for a general maintenance worker in the commission department. I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Stacey, any more comments? No, this was due to a resignation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item FF, action to approve a publication of a supplemental budget hearing. Move I have a approval. motion to approve. Approve approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Comments? This is, as you, we've kind of discussed this as the year has gone on, we're going to need to do a supplemental budget resolution to um, move money first in the 301 or the capital fund for the finance office project. There was money budgeted last year for that project and due to um, some long lead times and some unforeseen things, that project is going to hopefully happen now next, this month, we're in April, this month. Uh, so we'll need that. There's the money in general fund that um, I, we had discussed previously about moving over to the 201 fund for the interchange project. And then there's some also some dollars that rolled into fund balance in the highway fund for um, the river bridges um, down south that um, were budgeted last year. There's just some a few more bills left to pay, not a whole lot left there, but... Um, that money needs to get supplemented. And then I'll also be sitting down and reviewing this before we actually do the publication and make sure that we're not missing anything. But this is basically you giving us the approval to go ahead and publish that notice when we're ready. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item nine, commission department director's report. I shut my mic off. Uh, included with my staff report was the executive summary from um, our project manager, Chad Nelson, at the JL Expansion Project. He gives um, kind of what, kind of the March, the March update there, so that was included uh, in the packet. The rest of mine included the information on, the information that Sean had presented earlier. Um, 
one thing that did come up since this was uh, published was getting back into our Sioux Valley Commission commissioner meetings or our 10 county meetings. They want to get those uh, back rolling again. Um, they planned the first one for May 12th, which is the same day we planned our full day work session <laughs> next month. So I'm asking you, do we want to look for another date to reschedule that May 12th event so that so you can attend the, the 10 county meeting? Or do you want to forego the 10 county meeting and attend the work, just keep the work session on as planned? What are your thoughts? I'm just looking for some direction on that. If so, I can try to pull together some dates and send those out to see if there's another time that we can get together for our for our day-long event, or is that too hard to reschedule at this point? We're still five, six weeks out, so I wanted to pose that question to you. Do we know where the 10 county meeting is anticipated to be held? No, um, I won't see an agenda until probably a week, a uh, week and a half prior to that meeting. Um, since we haven't met for quite a while, I would anticipate there being some discussion on legislative session. Usually this would be, usually we would meet in March and they would invite legislators in to discuss the session, so I don't know if that piece would be on this agenda. Um, I think if it's held, we should probably be, probably should be there, so yeah. I don't want to. Why don't you sit down on another doodle down. poll? Another doodle poll and see what I can line up. See if we come up with anything that works. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. Um, just a reminder, too, as uh, we had some upcoming dates that I have on my report, make them a little bigger here. Next Tuesday isn't a commission meeting, but it is equalization boards, and we'll be starting at 8.30 next Tuesday morning, and you will be more to, meeting as the Board of Equalization to hear any um, appeals and go through all of the, the the things that need to be approved anyway. So regardless of appeals, there will still be a meeting to approve all of the reports. You'll be seeing an agenda probably later this week. Today is the deadline for those appeals, so we don't know what that looks like yet, and I don't know. I know Jen, Jenna works with Jacob, but I haven't heard anything on that. Um, next Wednesday, a week from uh, this Wednesday, the 14th, we do have that award presentation from the South Dakota Center for Prevention of Child Maltreatment, um, the South Dakota Resilient Communities Initiative. That will be held here in the chambers at 1030 on Wednesday the 14th. And then um, we will X out the May 12th work session, and I'll find a different date for that. So that's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. No. State's Attorney Report. Okay, Commissioner Pierce. The last two weeks for me have been very active with public affairs. So on May 22nd, I attended the uh, mayor's forum for the candidates. On March 25th, the school board forum. On April 1st, we had a public affairs meeting. And I don't have the date written down for the um, post-legislative meeting, Stacy. if you have that handy. And then April 3rd, um, the this last Friday, Saturday was the City Council Candidate Forum. And I'm told that early voting started on Tuesday, I believe. And Jenna said that 262, 272 people had voted as of 5 o'clock yesterday. So we're on our way. And that's all I have to report. But do you have that date? I don't have that date. I think, did I send that out? I think I sent that out as an email. It was attached to the chamber chat. I will look for that again for that post-legislative. They're doing it virtual, and you do have to register, but there's no cost. So I think I had sent that out maybe last week, but I'll, I'll look for that again. Okay. Mr. Bartley. All right, March 17th and 18th, I attended the SDAC meeting in Pierre, along with fellow commissioners. Uh, well-attended convention, I was, uh, was surprised. It was very well-attended and uh, we had no issues and everything was kind of fun actually, learned a lot of stuff. On the 25th, I had a detention center meeting and that's going well. I stopped by there this morning and it's really, they've got some cement and they've got a roof and a permanent roof and it's moving right along. We've got a temporary roof on the jail side so 
They're going to be ready by the end of the month for the jail cells to arrive, so we're looking forward to that. On the 29th, First District uh, uh, Marijuana Update with Todd uh, Kays, uh, an interesting uh, discussion. And on the 31st, uh, uh, we had planning board training, which was well attended by all the planners. And I think uh, the fact that we had some new people, that training session was really appropriate. And a lot of questions got answered for a lot of people, but uh, somewhat new to, to planning and zoning and, and uh, ex parte communications was covered uh, at length. So we all understand the, the issue with that and who you can talk to and what you should do and what you should say and how you should read yourself if you need to so that was a good one that's my report could I, could I just say that I found that on my calendar it's Wednesday the 14th next week is the post legislative luncheon by zoom you're frowning Stacy that's I haven't written on my calendar for that day I was just trying to think of what else was going on that day that's yeah in my mind that's yeah. it the 21st? no the 14th Before we meet again, Mr. Krogman? Yeah, uh, 17th and 18th of March, I was out in Pierre for the spring workshop. It's been uh, always good. To, uh, it's been a while since I've been there, so chance to see some people I hadn't seen in a while and learn a few things, as always. Uh, 24th, we had our beta meeting, and uh, we're kind of in a standstill here for our um, garage. We're looking for a final report from our um, our uh, person we hired to put together the uh, joint uh, building facility and that should be coming out soon um, but otherwise we're kind of just waiting for that uh, the 29th uh, was the BCOAC meeting uh, we discussed the, uh, the new position we also discussed uh, planning for the future and uh, we put together a mission statement and uh, some things like that agreed on upon those which will uh, there so we're getting a lot of things accomplished there in our meetings and uh, that will we got that one down to an hour, which is good, and uh, moving along there. That's all I have. Mr. Um I was also at the SDACC conference on the 17th and 18th, and then when we got back on the 18th, spoke for Leadership South Dakota out at McCrory. Um, on the 22nd, had the 4-H promotion and expansioning, 4-H promotion and expansion listening session, as well as the mayor, mayor's forum. Um, the 24th was the ICAP board meeting. 25th moderated the school board forum. Um, the 2nd of April, we had a BEDC retreat task force meeting, so we're kind of planning the strategic planning retreat. Um, and then the 3rd city council forum. So lots of stuff kind of in rapid sequence. Okay, on the 17th and 18th, I attended the meeting out in Pier. Uh, it was, uh, there was more people there than I thought would be there. It was well, very well attended, and it was some good, uh, some very good uh, subjects and topics were discussed out there. On the 25th, uh, volunteered out at the Swiftel for the pod. Um, it's uh, it went very well. Um, everybody working good together. They've uh, changed a few things. It goes pretty smooth. Uh, it's uh, great to see all the volunteers and also the. Um, businesses that let the volunteers take time off from work to be there. Uh, it's a really, really good event. So, on the 29th, uh, attended the uh, advisory board meeting at the BCOAC. Um, I just about made it home, and Stacy called me, and I had a Samara Avenue uh, meeting that uh, I had completely spaced off. But uh, uh, we discussed uh, some engineering firms for our project over there. On the 30th, I sat in on the bid opening for uh, the Aurora County Road 23 project, and uh, later in the day, uh, I, I don't know if uh, people are March contracts or April contracts for delivering grain is coming in, but I had numerous calls on when the load limits were going off. Uh, they're, they should be happy now. Brian left the load limits, and they can haul their grain in. But... Uh, that's all I have. Next on the agenda, uh, executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1-25-2, parentheses 1 and parentheses 4, personnel and contract negotiations. We have a motion to enter. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. 
We'll enter into executive session. Have a brief recess.
<laughs> Snarky. Ready? Yeah. A motion to come out of executive session. So moved. A motion to second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're out of executive session. Item number 13, regular business continued. Action approved the bid for weed chemicals and all items listed from Van D Supply and Ag First Farmers Co-op. We have motion to approve. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Motion carries. Have, uh, item 14, do I have a motion to approve to adjourn? So moved. A motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Full same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>